Uh, thank you for your coming to my lecture. Actually, you are here all the time, so I'm the one who came. Uh, and um, as you can see, I'm always in blue from the top to the bottom. And my iPhone is blue, my watch is blue, my socks is blue, my shoes is blue. So people think um, I'm always uh, in the same T-shirts. But it's not true. It's from different from yesterday. I have more than 100 of this. And then, um, hold on, just how, do, how it works. And then I got married with a uh, lady in blue. And um, this is my family, four colors. Always I start my uh, story from my family. Because all my uh, ideas, is com ideas are coming from my family. And why I made a question, oh, no, no, why I made a lecture in Harvard, one of the students made a question. How do you understand um, um, kids so much? Could you tell me how you can learn about it? I told him, it's quite simple. You get married, who is your girlfriend, you, and then you get the baby, you understand it. But it's quite simple. And um, these days, uh, you architecture student are poisoned by university. That is what we're talking about. And when I uh, ask uh, students, uh, students, I uh, ask the student, what is it? They said paper and the circular, but uh, nobody told us that it's a T. So you, got, uh, you don't have uh, no vision anymore. And um, in Japan, in the all Atria type office work very hard. And, but uh, my office is different, you know, always as you do in this country, we have weekend, and also we are not allowed. We are not. They are not allowed to come in before ten o'clock, and if they want to have a date, they can go for a date in the evening. You know, as long as they are doing work, it's fine. And um, did one thing we are very much proud of, and we had uh, eight marriages in the last ten years. So if you want to find your mate, you should come to my office. They always I say, you know, if you don't know the happiness, you know, you can't provide happiness to the others. And that is our job. It's quite simple. So I'm going to start uh, my lecture from the project. Everybody knows. You know? This is our uh, you know, kindergarten, how it used to, like, used to look like um, s until 13 years ago. And why I went there, and I found out it's really shabby, but I felt, you know, always they have to walk one building, another outside, another, another building outside. And I thought it's nice. So I told the owner, you know, you can keep the building as it is, okay? You don't need an architect. He really got upset. Then so he tried to convince me how many, as a showing, how many uh, leaking, leakage are happening in the building. And I was taken to see more than 30 leakage points. So then uh, I was showing this, and actually I was looking at my, my, our children. Start the video, please. And we designed the circle so they keep going. So that, you know, you know, after that uh, they get tired, they sleep better. You know, after they go home, it's uh, good for the family. And I found out there are some trees on the way. So we didn't want to cut it. So so we kept the tree on the middle of the classrooms. But the way you keep the tree, this kind of tree on the middle of the classroom, uh, you have to keep the root. So we had to make sure we put foundation where you don't cut the roots. We did some research. And then we designed this. Actually, um, when we designed this building, when we are designing this building, they went to see a project called the Roof House. Uh, I'm, not sh I'm not going to show you or show the project this time, but they have to go to the library to find my book. Okay, it's your assignment. <laughs> 
And uh, the roof house has no handrail, and people are sitting on the edge of the roof. So uh, then the uh, owner said, oh, I don't want to have any handrail on the edge of the roof. Uh, I said, I think it's impossible for kindergarten. But he insisted, and he said, how about having a net sticking out from the edge of the roof so they can ch catch the children falling off? Oh, I said it's impossible, but he said, okay, you go to, you know, local government, convince them. So I went there, and they looked at me, are you insane? And I came back, and I told the owner, uh, they told me I'm crazy. He said, oh, do you have to go back again? And he called the uh, local government, and they realized he is much more important than the mayor. You know, you know, mayor has election every four years, like uh, you know, president. You know, but uh, principal of the kindergarten doesn't have an uh, election, so their family has been running this kindergarten for sixty years. It means everybody in the council mem uh, are from this kindergarten, and they are trained to listen to the principal. And then when professor says, oh, you have to have a kindergarten without handrail, they listen. <laughs> and they are trained that way, but they are over 30 or 40 years old. They are listening to uh, the owner. Then we could keep that idea around the tree, but it's just an indication. It's handrail. It's amazing. And then they don't care about handrail. They jump in the tree. And more, more, and more. <laughs> and uh, you, know, you can see that this boy loves the tree, so he's eating the tree. <laughs> and then he insisted, and I want just on the net on the edge. And uh, it's, you know, it's impossible. You know, you have to have a vertical bar. It's a requirement. But when he saw this, it's not looking so bad. It's uh, monkeys in zoo. Feeding time. <laughs> and when we designed this kindergarten, we were not following a building standard for the kindergarten. And uh, first of all, the ceiling height is very low because we wanted to see the kids on top of the roof. You know, if the ceiling is too high, you don't see the kids on top. And the rooftop is inclined a little so they can see everybody on top of the roof. Inclined to the ins inward, inside, and also there is no boundary between classrooms because uh, um, if they are running Montessori education, the owner said, I don't want to have any wall, but according to the building standard, you are supposed to have three meters for classroom, and then you have to have a thick wall between classroom, but no wall. And also, just to you know, we don't have a wall against the courtyard. I said, oh, just let's keep it open. So it's almost outside. So the local government and also uh, you know, authority, local authority about the education didn't like it at all. So always they get complaints. One day everything gets changed. At 2011, 1st of 19th. Actually, the, just, uh, it happened before this. Um, um, United Nations and the OECD and the UNESCO tried to find the best school building in the world. They tried to understand uh, what the best school is. And then, um, uh, more than, uh, 100, I think, 166 submissions came from 33 countries. We didn't know anything about it. Each country submitted a uh, representative. And then, suddenly, they found out uh, this school became the best in the world. And then, it's amazing thing is, Japanese government changed its attitude completely. You know, Japanese government never listened to Chinese, never listened to Korean, never listened to Japanese, but they listened to an American, even Mr. Donald Trump, and uh, they listened to, you know, Europeans. So, so they said, oh, it's wonderful building. <laughs> and they said, I went to Paris, and uh, some people came from 
our French embassy, <laughs> and uh, they were sitting along with me. But I don't think they are being a part of making this kindergarten, but I think they were being proud of that. And then when we went back to Japan, we realized we are getting a prize from Minister of Education, suddenly, it everything gets changed. And then uh, my wife was appointed to be the one to set up a new standard for the kindergarten. Now we as a government, what we can do, whatever we want. So strong a position. So now we're doing whatever we want. Um, uh, this is the old picture before we put green. Uh, by the way, uh, this is the mount to make the staircase to be shorter. And if, if it is too long, uh, they might break their neck. But uh, no, Una said, you know, yeah, don't worry. You know, we make sure they don't break, break their neck. Uh, they, uh, um, they, may, they might break their arm or legs, but we make sure they don't break their neck, that the owner says. So a very peculiar owner. And, uh, and uh, you can see the, what these kids are doing. They are making mud balls every day, and there are 640 kids. When 640 kids are taking the mud ball away every day, <laughs> this mound disappeared. So construction company wasn't happy about it. And the gargoyle. There are lots of leaves falling on the roof. And then this is a lake washing place. This is normal water tap. This is flexible so they can spray the water to your friends. And uh, shower. And this boy is not washing his boots. He's putting in the water into the boot, his boots. <laughs> OK, cute. Now it's very important slides. When uh, uh, one of the German scientists came, actually she was a specialist, she got surprised. Oh, you know, when it's rainy day, they might get wet. And the owner said, oh, it's okay. In Japan, when they get wet, usually they change. And then the scientist said, well, still, still they might get wet. Well, what happens when they get wet? Oh, in Japan, usually kids are waterproofed, so you can wash them clean. They are not like iPhone, no, but these days you can wash iPhone too. Um, so my our point is, um, you know, in summer we go to beach. Sun is 50 degree, and in winter we go to skiing. And then that is minus 20 degree. So it's comfort is not about moisture nor temperature. It's about how we live. Because we are designed to stand against changes. And, uh, and also, it's very important to uh, keep them in nature. And uh, I'll tell you something about, uh, for example, bacterial you know, uh, con uh, balance. And sometimes uh, you, know, you will be told by authority, you have to make everything clean, sometimes antibiotics. But the problem is that when there is no bacteria, you know, your, uh, your immune system starts killing your body because the bacteria bacteria in your body is twice of the, your body cells. And then you are always keeping balance. And when the immune system doesn't have enemy, the immune system start killing yourself. And also, when you uh, put a uh, you know, uh, pregnant lady, um, then uh, the, the body starts killing embryo. That happens. So we need to be a part of uh, such a kind of things. And then one more slide I need to show you. Oh, could you start? Oh, this is not Japan. It's Indonesia, you know, Bali Island. It's called Kecha. And it's usually, rituals, usually uh, this ritual is played in, um, in the jungle. But can you hear the background noise? Beep? Okay, you can stop it now, okay? Oops, not just, a, I need to go back. <laughs> Oops, okay. Um, when we were recording that in jungle, I, we are not aware 
of the existence of that background noise. And when we play that the music or ritual in Tokyo, I realized there's so much noise behind. We thought it's a, it's a, there is a kind of uh, you know, glitch uh, with my iPhone, you know? But the scientist who invited me said, no, no, noise was always there. It's a part of jungle. But when you, you are in jungle, you learn to ignore it. It's amazing in the cancer system. It's not by the frequency, it's by the information. And he said, your body is doing exactly the same. In jungle, you can erase the noise of jungle. But in normal life, you are erasing noise of, uh, your, noise of your body. Your cardiovascular system making a noise of more than 70 to 90 decibel, bigger than the noise from the construction site. And once you dive under the water, noise come back. You know, when you are under the water, you can listen, you can, you can hear lots of noise, big noise, but it's not from the water, it's from your body. And in normal circumstance, you can't hear your body, no body noise. But if you go into a very special studio without reflection, and after 30 to 40 minutes, you start hearing your heartbeat and the breathing. And it's extremely noise, noisy. Uh, my point is that many scientists suspect uh, many most of the autistic uh, symptoms are caused by modern environment. And you know, the United States has the highest ratio of uh, autistic children. And the, the um, United States is the most advanced country in the world. So something to do with that environment. But if you are parents, you know, you know, when are you holding, you are holding a baby in your arm in very noisy restaurant, they sleep very well, and then you bring the kids back to the kids' room, and when they put in quiet bed, they start crying. That's the worst moment. <laughs> because they have no noise. And you know, in jungle, in the when background noise stops, that's the sign of the predator coming to eat you. So it's a sign of a danger. So background noise is needed. And also, sometimes you talk about silence. And then some Japanese pe students said, oh, tea house is a silence. But if you go there, it's a full of noise. And when you are in complete silence, you don't feel good, no? Uh, you feel unsettling. That is what we are. We need to be a part of noise. You know, students sleep better when I'm talking. <laughs> the same thing. Now, there is no, uh, no boundary between classrooms. And sometimes they teach mathematics right next to music. But they learn how then they learn to ignore it. If you uh, go to bar, still people are talking to each other. That is what we are. We are capable of selecting information. And also, this is another research. Today, and I have time, so just I'm telling uh, more stories. Uh, uh, there's a research about children in China, a newborn baby. These days, a uh, rich Chinese family tried to put their newborn baby in a very quiet room, expensive. But uh, one of the scientists found out that's a problem. That is really a uh, serious problem. Because when the baby is in a quiet room, when they are born, they start having a mental disorder. So really, they, uh, the baby sleeps better in the, uh, the noise, you know, not construction noise, just noise, amongst many. That is what we are supposed to be. So, you know, uh, there's no wall between classrooms. And uh, some authority says, oh, there's no way how uh, they keep concentration. It's, it's opposite. In the noise, they keep um, amazing concentration. Just like uh, listening to nice jazz in a bar, you know, it's really different from classic music. And there's one more thing. Um, Oh, you know, our, our, the autistic child can keep 
distance as they like. Sometimes they need more distance. So if the, this boy doesn't like to be in the classroom, the owner said, oh, we can let him go. And then he can, he's allowed to get out, but he said he will come back eventually. Because it's Sako, he comes back. <laughs> now just we talk about the future. This is a you know, futuristic movie from 1980s, the time of the Blade Runner and the Tron. Not the legacy, Tron. And the future represented like this. That's a, inside a computer was a future. And now Matrix. Still, it's, this is already an old movie, but the future is like this. Nothing different from now. And now, uh, uh, the Mr. Smith is saying, we designed uh, Arcadia. Everything is perfect. And the entire crop was lost. So it means human couldn't live in pure water. We are supposed in just normal situation. My point is, uh, you know, uh, some people say, oh, if you think about future, you need to know how to use a computer. You know, you need to have a, a project screen all over the place, but it's not true. You know, uh, our future is invisible. And you know, our kids are using this. And I'm not the Steve Jobs, man. I'm not selling, uh, I, I know, Apple products, but uh, I'm saying, uh, you know, because of this, you can go to Django, and uh, you can go wherever you want, and you can come back. And the people are saying, uh, you know, we are having problem uh, with uh, technology supporting war, but it's not true. Uh, we are having the time, uh, smallest number of people are killed by the war. Now everything is becoming so uh, obvious throughout the world. So people become aware of it. So my understanding of future is not about, you know, te uh, technology looking like a technology. Uh, we are hoping to have a future as we can be more human with support of technology, you know? That is what I'm talking about. Now, oh, I think she shows a picture too. You know, these days, you know, if you can see this building, it doesn't look like a high tech, but uh, if you see the size of column, it's quite tiny, but uh, 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 this is strong. It stands against uh, uh, twice of the gravity sideways. And then we got a very special column, you know, just like a tank, I don't know, the cannon or tank, you know, we spray the our, our steel into the barrel, we cast it out, it's an extreme, ex extremely strong column, and also we calculate how much, what kind of frequency happens, so we define the frequency of the beam, and I understand the structure, but I used to write program on um, the computer analysis, and also we analyze the uh, acoustic condition. So it's not just a space. It's supported by latest technology, but you don't see it. Okay, now, uh, this is how they divide the classrooms. They were supposed to help, but they don't help. They think they're helping teacher. The Christmas time. And uh, wash basin, these days kids don't talk to each other. So we force them to talk with each around the world. Christmas time, a monkey trying to fish another monkey. <laughs> oh, oh, each classroom has at least one skylight. And uh, we designed a Santa Claus come down for each classroom. But we made a mistake, you know. Uh, one day, uh, owner, um, invited very good looking American Santa Claus. We didn't tell him it's designed for Japanese Santa Claus. I can't imagine what happened. <laughs> the frame was too small. <laughs> and also, I need to talk about this. These days, people think we have to use LED, LED. But you should know that LED has a problem, uh, cause a problem for the kids' eyes. Uh, the blue light, Behind the LED and in the uh, in the light and uh, in the LED, kills the cells in the back of their eyes. So, still we can't use LED for small kids. And you are okay. You are all too old for that. 
but the f their eyes got very, uh, you know, very weak wall in the back of uh, their eyes, and they uh, they lose sight. Mm. Now, this is a movement of boy between 10 past 9 to 30 past 9. Within 20 minutes, he moved this much. This is not exactly small building. Okay, could you run the movie, please? Uh, this is from uh, uh, one of the Japanese TV program. Kids keep running. But we didn't tell them they have to run. It's a spontaneous movement. And the point is there is no, uh, no praying to, just they try to do something by themselves. Just like a sheep coming out from a cage in the morning. And I just you can see the how they are running around. This is what they are and how you used to be. And the blue guy, you know, looking down from a kind of special crane. And the roof is inclined. The slight inclination makes them run. And the point is, there is no uh, praying to. And when there is no praying to, they have to improvise to decide their movement. But that is how, you know, social activity, hap activity happens. And uh, CNN, and it's announced, uh, it's broadcasted all over the world. But the problem is that uh, no, CNN still think uh, uh, Japan is a part of China. They're using Chinese music. <laughs> <laughs> well, Japan used to be a part of China, you know, uh, maybe 1,600 years ago. Okay, not anymore. Okay. okay could, could you start again? And this is the movement of the kids from drone. It's not ants. It's amazing, it's amazing how much they move. And uh, we projected this image in, on one of the models at Venice. Okay, next one. Okay, okay, okay. You see that you know, kids are running out, out of the model. I think it's uh, it's gonna end sooner or later. You can see, uh, you know, the projects are working extremely well in Venice. The best part is uh, kids are taking s stairs up, sliding down. Okay. Since we became government, we can do what the way we want. So we put seven floors in five meter. So ceiling height is very low. When you do that, it's uh, just some in danger. So you have to experiment. So usually you put your kids first. You know, you know, you know you see, you first project you design the mother's house because you can test we as a mother, okay? And we do that with kids, huh? And he hit his head, but uh, he's okay, he's resilient, because he's my son. <laughs> and then we put other kids, and traffic is awful in Tokyo, that driver in front. And you know, small dosage of danger is very important. That is how they learn. They, that is how they learn motor skill, you know, all these kinds of things. And they they learn how to help each other, okay? There's no function inside. It's like English language class. My daughter, this is how she used to be, not anymore. <laughs> She's trying to go to art university now. Yeah. Now, it's a more serious project. Uh, I think you know that the tsunami hap like, came to Japan. And that tsunami, uh, the highest tsunami reached 40 meters from sea level. 40 meters is amazing. You know, I mean, this building is uh, maybe 10 meters, so four times of this building. You don't know how you can survive. <laughs> and uh, when it happened, you know, more than uh, 20,000 people killed. But the funny thing is they had two hours to escape. They were watching news. And the uh, uh, national TV was saying, you have to leave the coast, you have to leave the coast. But the people stayed because people didn't believe it. 
And they are always tsunami, but you know, not such a big, they didn't believe it. It's a, okay. <laughs> they didn't believe it. And uh, um, and there, there nobody survived from last tsunami. Last tsunami is 1611, exactly 400 years ago. You know, after 400 years, everybody forget. You know, 1611, at the time, Galileo Galilei was saying, this planet is turning around the sun. And he gave up. But there's one monk saved thousands of lives. Uh, at the end of the promenade, uh, the stairs go up and there's a temple. The monk said, you know, if an earthquake happens, you have to come to my temple. It means if you go to the old temple, you get, your life gets saved because the old temple survived the last one. So it means your life gets saved. And uh, these trees were planted after the last tsunami. So this is exactly 400 years old. And we decided to use these trees to rebuild kindergarten. I was asked to UNESCO to help them. And uh, not UNESCO, you know, UNICEF. But they asked me to design a temporary construction. I said, it's wrong. You have got enough money to rebuild new one, so we should design for a longer time. So they said, OK, do you have money? Uh, it's, is it enough? I said, no, it's OK. We, we recycle these trees. But the, uh, the things I'm very good at, it, I say, you know, it's possible all the time. And the people in my office always have to suffer. <laughs> but that is what you do when you go to new office. <laughs> very heavy columns, One, or about two tons, 2,000 kilograms. And we used the uh, old joinery. Because we knew that, you know, all juniors survived Japan more than a thousand years. The wedges, we're using wedges, no? And we are making a hole in the middle because we, uh, we need to dry the column from inside out. It's old Chinese technique. But the Chinese used to do that a thousand years. I don't know how and how they got such a craftsman with long arm to drill, you know, six meters. But they, they managed to do it. But these days it's quite easy. You, you get the drill in the middle. And uh, it looks like a temple because uh, it's a part of a temple. But designed for at least 400 years. Long, long line span. And this is a column telling a story. If tsunami comes, you have to come to me. This is, a, this is a where you get life gets saved. I was killed by tsunami 2011. This is a message for the children, 2411. This is how the problem are looking like. Big trees get, they, uh, died, and we are planting new trees. So if you go to site, 2411, maybe you may see our new project. <laughs> now you can see, uh, could you run, you know? You can see how it's looking like. And uh, uh, many ch children came back and we built that project on the middle of the forest, on the middle mountain. They're all gone. You know, there's a famous architect called Kengokuma. He moved all this and made his, his own town. <laughs> so it's all gone. <laughs> and, but we, still, we managed to uh, save some of the original surface. And the people said, oh, it's too dangerous to put kids on the slope. But he's OK now. Yeah, this is how kids are supposed to be. You know. Also, in Japan, it is illegal to put kids this uh, inclination, but it's okay, you know. This is how they train by themselves. If you don't get used to uh, survive in slope, you can live in San Francisco. Huh? <laughs> and uh, the, this area is very cold in winter, minus 15, and summer is 40 degrees. But they're happy to be outside. No, you don't need to protect them so much. You know, this is how they were supposed to be. They keep running, running, and uh, running like this. It's not training, you know. They are moving by themselves. That is the power of architecture, you know. Okay, you can go to the next one. I think, oh, yeah, I can do that. Huh? Okay. 
this is uh, another project. No, it's called Ubuntu.net, and inside uh, there's a uh, there's a net woven by you know uh, Canadian artist. Inside you have a net like this, like a forest, and uh, this is five more than five hundred piece more than five hundred pieces of huge timbers. And of course, this is this time is laminated timber, because you can't cut a big tree. But if you using the laminated, suburb along this, uh, and that's the, you, you don't need to cut. You can keep the forest, but still you can utilize uh, timbers. Okay. You don't need you don't need to tell them to have move around. Uh, is it a kind of party going on? <laughs> Maybe you should tell them to come to my lecture. Otherwise, I can't give you that uh, in a grade. <laughs> is it open? Okay. This is architecture, I think. You know, always people think, what is architecture? It's about the life. You know, these days, uh, you know, p students are trying to get ideas from magazines, but they should know that everything published in magazine is designed four or five years ago, and uh, the idea is 10 years old. So everything on magazines is obsolete. And another uh, uh, important point, when you design architecture for kids, you have to design for the space for grown-up as well. This is where... Uh, People spend more time. Father is always tired. He got some injury. He's okay. She's okay. My wife and my son. He's cute. <laughs> my son. But not anymore like this, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. I show some pictures because uh, Japan is sometimes very snowy country. This area gets a very heavy snow again. You know? This is uh, one level up from ground level. So to get another side of the street, you have to go walk through the tunnel like this. Actually, this is a picture from uh, 20 years ago. Now it's not like this, just because they have uh, water to melt. And then uh, and, uh, a site architect called us. Uh, it is, uh, uh, it's impossible to get the site. How to get there? The, this is a month of snow we gained in a day. This is how, you know, also you can climb up the top like a Mount Everest. But when you design architecture in such a kind of harsh environment, we have to make sure, you know, it's good for you know, nice weather. Because even you are in Norway or Sweden, still you get weather, good weather in summer and springtime. Tops up. And then it's summer. Okay? It's open, like a market. You know, there's a story about this uh, site. You know, uh, there used to be a town center. And heavy snow came. And uh, they that snow squashed more than 80 people, killed. So they built a temple, you know, say I'm sorry to them. And then after that, they built a new town center. Then earthquake came, and the wall fell down, people get killed. So nobody won't touch that real own center of the, this Tokamachi city. Then uh, eventually they came to us, you know, and uh, we are not known to be good luck parent, the good good luck part, you know, couple. So uh, they asked us to design new one. So this became the center of the city again, market. Okay. And I'm going to show you a few more projects. Just, I'm trying to wrap up. This is a, a church, and they have a kindergarten to help some, uh, you know. Uh, mental dis uh, disorder, and then 
on the center, they have a very modest church. And they didn't want to use any expensive material. So I said, OK, just uh, we can use very thin material. And uh, just we can use uh, just a uh, you know, straight one, very simple shape. 20,000 pieces of uh, timbers, like this. And we spend uh, so much time to under understand the acoustic environment. Because when you design church, you have to make sure your voice travels nicely, like a lecture hall. But at the same time, you need echo for, you know, you know, you know. He's Peter Cook. <laughs> He's trying to pre be, uh, you know, uh, priest. He's always, always funny. You can see that uh, it's uh, composed of uh, small pieces. Of it. And, uh, we, we used about uh, 20,000 pieces. And this is a wedding happened in the space. And um, it's, actually, they were a uh, uh, couple worked on this project. So I told them, if you don't finish the project in time, you, you, there is no wedding. So they worked very hard. <laughs> and the lighting. Now, sometimes students try to get the same lighting as daytime. That's not true. You know, it's not the right thing to do. Because after dark, church should be dark too. Because the church represents the world. And uh, in, after dark, uh, the light lit up on the people and light goes up. And you can play this Richard just a little bit. And always uh, I uh, play piano uh, to confirm the acoustic environment. Uh. Okay, next. Uh, I don't need to run too much. Okay, next. Okay, it's fine. And this is another church. We design many churches. And the funny thing is, uh, you know, I'm not a uh, Christian. You know, some people ask, and how come you can design church uh, not being Christian? But you need to understand Japan. You know, when uh, Abgao became uh, three years old, they want to get the celebration in Shinto temple. It's called Shichigo-san, 753. And then, and when, uh, when they get... Uh, uh, when they can get married, they want to go to a Catholic church. It looks good. And when they die, they go to Buddhism temple. That is why they find a uh, graveyard. So uh, take picking a religion is like, uh, like going to another hamburger shop, you know? <laughs> it's free. So, so when you uh, design Christianity, Christian church, become Christian, and then Sunday in the afternoon, I go to Buddhism church, a Buddhism temple, and I pray for Buddhism, Buddhism now. And then sometimes I go for wedding of my st students from Middle East. Okay, say, okay, uh, for, <laughs> just like this in the mosque. So, oh, this is a, a pool for baptism, and I don't know how you call it, but the uh, pastor said, oh, this was a very good idea. You know, it looks like a part of floor. So we don't need to tell them to get the bap baptism. They can step into and they s automatically they, they get baptized. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is a pasta. And this, uh, um, uh, this church is called, uh, uh, you know, church with some, e church with Eve. Eve, church of Eve, you know, always uh, nice to have Eve. You know, in, in, the, in Japan, there's a sentence saying, if you let people to get into Eve, sometimes these people take over your main house. But it means people used to invite, uh, you, know, peop, uh, you know, the owner of the house used to invite people underneath of Eve so uh, they can help people on the street. So this... Uh, happening. Uh, this is the best part, uh, one of the best part of uh, uh, my profession. You know, it's, it's an amazing moment. She gave us a Bible uh, from her father. She's already 85 years old, so the Bible must be 
uh, more than 40, 50 years old, but she said, you know, I want you to have it. So it's, it's the biggest honor we had. Okay, I think it's the, this is okay, huh? And then we can show you another one, you know? Could you run this? Oh, uh, this is another kindergarten we, uh, we published just only f uh, four months ago. And uh, it's umbrella to make our uh, kids making circle around. How it's looking like. It's, uh, these days we make uh, many timber buildings. Again, there is no coido, always you have to walk around, but it's good for the kids. Uh, could you run this movie, please? And there is no uh, edge, so, you know, even he falls, he's okay. <laughs> and then it's, uh, no, because these days, uh, you know, parent doesn't want to get them hurt. But this is how they you know, train themselves. It's a part of their training. And this is uh, March, so we, water is very cold. And uh, this girl doesn't like, take a, doesn't like to take any shower in her house. <laughs> she keeps taking a shower, 12 degree in the winter. And then this uh, small boy is so happy and uh, come to me. And uh, no. <laughs> oh. And the daddy, then they go back. It's no more story. Okay. I think it's too much. Okay. And if, I think two more projects. Um, this is uh, Chamber of Commerce. Oops. And, uh, in the, and in Tomioka City. This is uh, World Heritage uh, Silk Factory. This silk factory is known to have a, a first, uh, you know, I guess, a rule for working condition, you know, in Japan. This is the oldest modern factory in Asia, and uh, and uh, they 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 needed to work only eight hours a day, you know, 19th century, you know, and also they had the latest uh, uh, in medical care, you know, from uh, the doctors are called from Europe, French, French doctors. And uh, they had a weekend, and uh, so this became a kind of model for uh, modern factory in Japan in the last century, uh, not 19th century. And uh, this is a station uh, uh, with gold medal. Actually, they used to work for us. And then there's another famous architect called uh, Kengokuma. Always he get the biggest, biggest portion. He get the biggest project, and then I get, I get second biggest. <laughs> And this is Chamber of Commerce. And we made, tried to make a passage in the, in the town then. And we had to preserve this facade. But this building uh, collapsed after the earthquake. So we had to rebuild the facade. And also, uh, we had, uh, we, I, can, I can say, refurbished all the warehouse. The idea is uh, keeping this geometry like this, and then uh, uh, making another side to be modern. And this city is not just world hate, it's about world heritage. Uh, this uh, city has a, you know, a company to make launching space rocket, and they sent space rocket to uh, asteroid. They picked up the piece of asteroid back to Japan, uh, back to you know the us. And, and also, they have the latest medical company. They have the biggest share of the machine in the world. So uh, this city, city is not about or not about uh, history. They wanted to have future. Okay, it's, uh, and this is a picture of the old factory. This is the first modern uh, truss structure, timber structure, in Japan. You know, you, you mean, you know, 440 years ago, Japan was really behind. 140 years ago, you know. And uh, this is a structure we made, and it's a monocoque structure, but yet we are keeping the feeling of timber. But it's not the truss, it's a surface model. 
So one side looking like this, and you walk through, and uh, then you get in, like this nest structure. And uh, this is how it's looking like. This is uh, this is derived from the local detail, uh, the, the detail of the local architecture. It is get light like this, and also same time they present the silkworm factory. This is how they used to make silkworm. Okay. Okay. Oh, this time it's working itself. So just uh, in the, uh, from the books, uh, bookshelves, everything got the same diagram, but it's all uh, you know, derived from uh, uh, local you know, culture. 100% timber. In these days, uh, you see uh, the magazines saying, you know, uh, timber, timber architecture. But most of these are not really timber. You should be careful, you know. I think eventually people start discover. Oh, this time it's working now. Uh, this is a church we built recently, and um, uh, it's Protestant church, but they think they want to go back to basic. You know, they don't want to think they are new, you know, uh, Christian, Christianity. You know, they, they are saying we are going back to the basic. So it means, so we, we try to go back to the time of, the, of uh, Egyptian temple, that before Moses, you know, This is how, you know, this light is very important in Christianity. And uh, also just we walked around old, uh, you know, churches in uh, our Eastern Roman Empire. By the way, her name is Maria. So I thought this is a good picture. <laughs> and then this is a, a project we built recently. You know? It's uh, got nice surface, so they can get nice reflection of uh, uh, sound from pipe organ. And this is after dark, you get a very blue, nice blue light. Actually, we happen to go to the, uh, our rear pipe organ, but they have an uh, old organ on the corner. And it's, uh, uh, the church is called uh, 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 Rada of Angel. You know, you know it's a kind of uh, light coming down to the sky. And it's a very important part of Christianity. Again. So some people say, it's, oh, it's easy to look cold with it, but I think it's, uh, it's going backwards, uh, much older than that, you know. We are trying to go back to basic, how it used to be. So if you go to Eastern Roma, uh, place our uh, churches in Rose, Eastern Roma Empire, you find this kind of light quite a lot. Somehow. Uh, Skylights. I worked with uh, artist, and also I derived some details from these. So we got holes like this. Okay, uh, I think it's too much. Uh, this is the latest project. It's not built yet. Uh, it's uh, uh, you know it's a project in Melbourne, and uh, it's the middle of the you know high sky high skylights uh, middle of the high lights building. We decided to build a kindergarten with nice roof. So you can, everybody can see things in the garden. So roof is inclined. Oops. But we, details hasn't come yet. Okay, this is the last one. Because uh, you, you people are too young to know this project. You know? It's an old project. Some people say uh, I copied that design from the Yang Museum. But this is all the De Yang Museum. You should know that, you know? And uh, some people say... Uh, you know, uh, you know, snow header, you know, I, I copied idea from snow header, you know, to opera house. The roof house is about five years older, <laughs> but I don't say that to them. <laughs> uh, this is a museum in the deepest snow in the world. And uh, this was the front cover of uh, Ben Spin Nale 2004. And uh, it's all worded. It's very, it's really against what you learn in normal school because still expands.
But the point is uh, we got a very special base, so the building slides absorb the movement. So if you want to go to see the bigger building, you should go to summer. It's about 20 centimeter longer. <laughs> but you need to have a good eyes. You have a big window in the corner. It's a little less than 40 meter. It's a very expensive window, half a million dollar per piece. 2,500 tons of coating steel. Okay. And in the winter, five minutes, one day. And this area gets 30 meters of snow each year, squashed down six to seven meters of ice, and then all disappears. Very dangerous snow. So if you coat in the crevice here, you have to wait until May to come out. It takes a long time to get out. And then one day, our curator called, uh, snow is piling out, piling up. Are you okay? Do you think it's okay? I said, it's okay, it's calculated. Then they called us again. <laughs> Are you sure? So I called structure engineer. Structure engineer said, yeah, I, we calculated it carefully, it should be okay. So I told the curator, structure engineer says, probably okay. <laughs> they called us again, scary. And now just we are getting used to, but uh, it's really heavy snow. It's about, uh, you know, uh, uh, more than 2,000 kilograms per square meter, and two, uh, two cars, and one car each square meter. It's very heavy. And, uh, but when you, the snow is reaching to the ceiling, and we got a very nice line of the light, we call the Tada Ando effect. <laughs> now it's coming to the end of slides. Uh, so this is a car we are driving. It's got Citroen Cebu. And uh, you know, there's no air conditioning. So uh, in the summer, you have to open it up. But uh, sometimes it rains, so, but still you can open this window. But if you forget to close this when you go into expressway, all the water in the bonnet comes into the cabin and making ponding on the floor. Then, now, if you read uh, instruction very carefully, you know, if a water, water pond happens, you can pull the plug out from the floor. You can let the water out. The, my point is this car is not perfect. You know, the, uh, the, but the great thing, it was in production for uh, almost uh, 40 years, something like that. It's amazing. More than 40 years, 45 years. You know, it's easy to design architecture to stand for a long time, just as a structure. But usually people destroy it before the lifetime because people don't like it. And some old architectures are not durable, but people try to save it because he, they like it. And uh, the owner of the roof house uh, gave a very nice comment. You never get satisfaction, 100% uh, perfection from this architect. Or is there something going wrong? But I promise, you know, you get, you love this architecture 200%, like kids. You can put many people in, you can put many things in, you can put family in. That's the time I came to uh, 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 UC Berkeley, you know, San Francisco, 2006, I think. Thank you very much. You can make those conditional. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, so I think we've got a few a few minutes to take some questions from students and guests, and I'll pass this around. Great. Hi. Um, oh, it's loud. Um, it was really exciting because um, it's like you know seeing a lot of quotes from the train, and then I remember them because they're so nice, and I finally meet the author of all that quotes. Um, so what was really exciting about the presentation was that I see a lot of kind of really in, intense research on various topics uh, depending on the purposes of the building, such as you know how the walls uh, are not there in the kindergarten. You're considering the proxemics of the kids and uh, you know high tech acoustics and lightings and history of religious architecture and all that things and 
I want to know if these um, researches or studies are purposely synthesized in your practice, or is it just about like Japanese architecture that you guys just make good decisions intuitively? <laughs> okay, uh, I think it's a very good question. You know, you can't be clever so fast, because still you are, when you are young, you are not clever enough, you don't have enough knowledge. But uh, if you uh, are being decent human being, if you are doing right thing, always there's an answer. And you know that it's nicer to open the window. And you don't feel good when everything is closed. So if you, if you ask your body, you, uh, I know, it gives you good answer. And I found uh, the people understand these kind of things. And then after we try these things, eventually people come to help us. There are many people got PhD making research about uh, Fuji Kindergarten. And they're making questions, you know, interviews to me. And uh, just also this, this research come after. But my point is we absorb, you know, all these uh, reasoning, you know, after construction, and it becomes a part of knowledge. So we designed hospital, but while we are designing, well, we study with uh, scientists about uh, bacterial environment. Mm -hmm. And also, after we built uh, this uh, Fuji kindergarten, uh, we uh, had some talk with new scientists and the scientists about uh, our sound environment. So always you have to open to science. Mm -hmm. You read things. And also, when I was a student, uh, uh, I used to write a program from scratch to analyze the structure. You know, before, it's a long time before structure analysis program happens. It is all just algorithm, like a matrix. So I, I was a really mathematic guy. And so all these background helps. And, but you, you don't need to be disappointed. You know, when you are young, you don't know these kind of things. It's quite normal. But if you are doing the right thing, and you know, people try to help you, you get a, a group of people who still emphasize what they're doing. So I have many scientists helping from different schools, you know, some people from MIT, some people from Harvard, and some people from Tokyo University. That is how it works, okay? You're from China? Oh, no, from here. From here, yeah. from here. Oh, from here, okay. So you get the help from uh, the Bakri or this one. Okay. Great, thank you. Another question? Great. Hi, my name is Juliana. Um, I'm currently in 410, and I'm uh, building, I'm designing a um, after-school extracurricular activities kind of building. Uh, and it's for kids mainly. And the focus is, um, I'm focusing on the process because I feel like uh, kids learn a lot during process in t instead of just focusing on the final product. And for example, you were explaining that for different projects you have like um, help from different uh, scientists, right? But for example, me, um, I don't know if, if I could find that help and uh, I'm, still um, studying how kids react to certain things. I was uh, earlier looking into like surfaces and how they explore spaces and all of that. And I want to ask um, what is the best advice you could give me since I don't have um, many resources as a student, I guess, uh, to like uh, understand better like how kids react to um, spaces or just um, yeah, I think I gave you the answer, and I, I mean, did I tell the story? Just you know, when I was talking to the student in Harvard, and uh, I told him, you get married, then you get the baby, and you understand uh, how they react. And uh, if, even you don't need to have a baby; just uh, you adopt children, and they do same thing. <laughs> and uh, that's one thing I can tell you. You know, people always think, oh, people from Japan is different from. American, you know, so white people different from yellow and black or purple, whatever, you know. But I think 
It's all the same. My, my office is from uh, seven countries. You know, India, and China, and uh, Portugal, and uh, uh, Ireland, and uh, France, and Australia, and Malaysia. But when they are in a comfortable environment, they react the same way. And the kids also the same. You know, we got almost, almost almost the same gene sequence. Difference is very small. So just try to observe it. You know, there's a big difference between ob observation and analysis. Even you try to analyze it, you know, you g don't get answer. Analysis is usually based on the kind of um, quantification. You, you just, our scientists try to understand the, in the quantifiable, you know, things to be picked up, but observation is different. And analysis is the one to get in. You know, some people, so for example, when you ask somebody, why this tea, tea, this tea, tea is so tasty? And then scientists try to boil this tea and try to understand the uh, you know, uh, ingredients, and um, they, they, they make spectral analysis, and then they list the numbers that so he said, Oh, this is the reason why it's so tasty. It doesn't mean anything. But if you talk to an old lady, she will give you an answer. Oh, it's so simple. Outside is cold, inside is warm, and as the, you were, uh, you know, in, in front of the table, usually you, know, you eat with a, is a family. But after all, and I have been meet, making your tea already 25 years. That is why this tea is so tasty. But it's the, the, the truth, you know? Truth is not about analysis. No, just you can't analyze it. It's a relationship with other environment. So just try to observe kids all the time, and you understand it. You know, you can learn from, that bo from the books, because when you make, uh, when you read the books, sometimes it lies, you know? Follow your instinct. It's quite simple. Okay. Thank you. I think we've got another one okay. here. Okay. Yeah. Hi, my name is Chao Lun from China. Mm -hmm. So my question about uh, kindergarten de design because this semester I'm working on a kindergarten design. So I want to ask you, uh, how do you define the boundary in your design, and uh, what's a, yeah, what's the boundary meaning in your architecture? Boundary in the physical form or and how we can frame the knowledge, what kind of boundary you're talking about? Um, like visual? separate different space, like public and the private space. Yeah, because I see, uh, see you, Fudi uh, Kindergarten, so there is no clear boundary. Yeah, no boundary is better, okay? Always boundary is the uh, biggest issue. Okay, first of all, you can talk about safety. You know, people think, oh, it's higher walls better. But you know that the most of the violent incident happened behind the higher wall. Because if something happens, people cannot escape. And the people cannot help. That's the truth. So, you know, around, around that kindergarten, there's a very small fence. So, if, of course, if you want to get in, you can step on it. But it makes a lot of noise. Huh? And the people escape, people leave. And the secondly, it's better not to have boundary between inside and outside. Because that is how we are supposed to be. Sometimes you want to be outside, sometimes you want to be inside. Uh, you know, we used to be able to find a good environment in the nature, sometimes under the tree, inside the building, but these days you are not moving. So you are trying to bring the environment from outside. That is why many things are happening. And also, boundary between people, that's the worst thing that happens. And I can tell you one thing, and I always I keep telling this. You know, Chinese people say, you know, oh, Japanese architecture, that's a copy of Chinese architecture. I said, it's wrong. You know, you came to Japan, you know, in the fifth century or fourth century. You built this, these. You know, that is your architecture. And that these people stayed in Japan. So you are me. There is no different. You know? So, but some modern age people put the boundary between the people, then some people say this is Chinese, this is Japanese, but it's not true. There is no boundary. 
Korean, Japanese, and Chinese, it's very similar. And even just I talking to, to people from India, doing the same thing. So, you know, no boundary is the most important element of the Fuji Kindergarten. I'll tell you one more. In the link, you know, there's when, peop, uh, when the uh, scientists see the link, and then they try to find the center. One of the, one of the scientists try to find the center of the Fuji Kindergarten. It doesn't exist. Because I drew the shape, and they scanned it in. There's no geometry. <laughs> Just I leave them to find the center. But my point is, uh, uh, it's not the uh, enclosure. It's link, represent uh, Buddhism. In Buddhism, nothingness on the middle of the circle is the most important. Because there's nothing on the middle, he can bring everything in and out. So ring doesn't mean enclosure. It's openness. Because you are being empty. You know, just like a donut, scent of the donuts, you know, the, the most important essence of the donuts is whole, but you can't eat it. You know? You know? So it means no boundary between uh, the bottom to the top, it's open. Do you understand? Okay, thank you. Thank you. These are provocative questions. Do you have time for one more? One more in the back? Great. We could do this all evening, I think. Hello, I'm Juke. Uh, thank you so much for coming today. Uh, we enjoy your presentation. Uh, I just want to talk about uh, there's so much playfulness in your architecture, and I feel like your architecture is very much like acts like uh, furniture or the other way around. Uh, can you expand more on that? Like, uh, sure. Yeah, like, oh, you know, like everything is connected, everything is like, oh, you can use this as a part because like I saw one of your videos with your house mm -hmm. and it seems like uh, you don't have specific rooms and it ah uh, yeah 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 mm -hmm. yeah so you know you know it's like actually it's about architectural space you know usually you define the function of which room like uh, that room for Mimi <laughs> like uh, room out that maybe that is uh, uh, Dean's room <laughs> or and the toilet, but in my architecture, we try not to define. And firstly, that belongs to our tradition. If you go to Japan, you know you find Japanese architecture has uh, multiple functions, and because of that, you know people you know, try to make best of use of the architecture, and that is how architecture survived long time. You no. Know? So maybe it's a real cultural thing. But of course, when I do things uh, in Europe, things may be different. I'm doing some project um, now in uh, Belgium, and also I do some project uh, in, uh, in Melbourne. So there could be some difference. Yeah? But there's one thing I can tell you. All the clients coming to my, uh, my office, are you know just really understand what they're doing, no? So we try to understand our philosophy, but it doesn't mean that they are doing exactly donuts. We always uh, you know we say you know, we are a very nice donut shop, but the way they come to my house, and uh, always uh, always they say, okay, we uh, we make very nice classic donuts, but we have other merchandise. How about pretzels, and uh, dumplings, other things. And then it works. As long as uh, philosophy is good, you know, you know, you can extend the philosophy, you know, you know, modify the property to, to suit condition. You know, you know, did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Great, thank you very much, I sense. Oop. Yes, I was gonna do okay. two housekeeping okay. questions. You've got some books there that you wanna do something with, I think. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 just I was trying to give this to the school. Oh, to the whole school. Okay. okay. Oh, thank you very much. Okay. So just uh, there are three monographs, one, two, three. And uh, this is uh, my lecture in Harvard. And uh, so, uh, they published as they people understand the lecture. But then, uh, if you don't have money to buy this in Amazon, you, know, you, can, uh, you can Google my TED talk. And that's uh, a shorter version. 
Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. And one housekeeping request uh, of all of you, uh, there was a survey on your chair uh, as you're leaving. Can you fill that out and leave it on the console's desk or with the uh, console rep at the back? Thank you very much. Thank you all for attending. Thank you for the great questions and thank you, Tezuka-san, for a thank wonderful, you. wonderful lecture. Thank you. Thank you.